off the line. Look at Kevin on the outside. Four cars, passenger. Yeah, so Kevin there, and then just touching his back wheel into the uh, into the gravel section there, but he would have been, you know, fully on the gas just to try and pull himself out of the uh, of the gravel there. We see uh, two cars into the joke as well. Another angle for Kevin there. You can see the angle where he is he is uh, got the car rotated out compared to the other drivers. And to not panic in that situation, and I don't mean it about crashing so much as the situation that you're in. It's like no, you just don't need it, do you? And he would have known, and he knows he's in that world championship by the pressures on, and he's done everything everything right to get himself to this point. Joker at the right time to, to, to split the strategy with Bacuska. He would have known before turn one that it wasn't going to be a great start for him. Yeah, so he's gone off the line and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. This is not what I needed. And then, of course, when you're, when you're on the outside of a, a four-car sandwich, again, there's just nothing he can do. But Kevin, with a brilliant recovery, what we'd expect of the guy who's sitting second in the World Championship standings at the minute. Kevin Hansen takes the first win of World RX at Sweden. Here we go, talk us through this. Yeah, so replay here on board with Timmy Hansen, and you can it doesn't look like there's cars beside him, but big contact, and at this point, he's, he knows he's going through there. And uh, don't, I don't think he maybe picked the puncher up here. I think this is where he picked the puncher up, going over the jump as well. We're not going to see it. From, uh, on we this might, shot. We might see it on the exit here. So you think he picks it up I, and he lands? Here I we go. Think when he lands here, uh, he's maybe he's in the next shot. But uh, yeah, so I, I think he picks up the puncture off of the jump. He lands too heavy on the back left. And uh, well, we've, we've already, we've not, we've not seen it. But uh, well, we might be able to find it. We might be able to find Timmy's landing and see whether or not it was. But for him and Sebastian Eriksson, it was a disaster. Eriksson did well to recover. Timmy did well to hold on to the end of the race. But carnage in race two. Right, here we go. Take a deep breath. Here we go, turn one. So, Derrida and Shishrit, we know there was, well, there's five car contact here. Literally everyone is touching everyone there. So, Kaliokoski, Derrida's in the gravel, so's Ericsson. So, Ericsson goes standard lap. Does, no, he goes joker, does he? OK, we'll see it from the outside. Look at that, all five cars in contact. That, if someone's got that as a photo, that is a hell of a picture. So Ericsson goes joker with, and that was a good move. So, on the, at the minute now on the inside, look, Derrida comes over the jump to go P2. So where does it go wrong for Derrida? Here's Derrida in P2. Kaliakoski's just out short, runs a bit wide. So you think he's already got the problem there, Dan? Yeah, I mean, I think the car's looking a bit loose. There's maybe a problem with the back right. You can see they're so twitchy. Um, I don't know. It's, you can't really visibly see any damage, but it doesn't look like it's handling correctly. This is Kaliakoski's joke. In the background, you can see a bit of contact there. So actually, there was contact there on the run into turn two. Shishrit just gave a little nudge to the back of Ericsson. Nothing major. Scheid is having a look at Kaliakoski now. So this is the jump. Right, this is where Scheid... Kaliakoski makes a mistake for me there, runs deep. Scheid backs out of him. Kevin says, thank you very much, I'll take it. Yeah, you just got to take the advantage of it uh, as soon as you can. I think this is just the incident between there. Uh, yeah, so... Shishrit putting Scheid around and then Scheid around and Scheid put Shishrit around in Norway. There might be a, bit, a little bit of payback there, but it hasn't worked out for either of them, I'm afraid. Right, here we go. This on board with uh, Rainis. Yeah, up to turn one. Here he goes, look. And he knows. It's gone. Just hit. Just like that. It's so easy, isn't it? So he corner. tries to turn. Watch for Baumannister. So he can't go anywhere. He gets contact front left with Timmer. And then, oh my goodness me. Now, the only thing I would say here, Dan, is that the roll itself was in the gravel trap. And so I, if the roll cage is still all the first hit, was there was a big contact on the front, front right, right top as he went corner. over, yeah. We've just got to hope. That's German, who I think is possibly your object fixation there with Nitish's car in the gravel trap and has ended up dropping it. This is Timmer, who said his joker was good. And it was, wasn't it? Look at that, it's tidy. Yeah, very good. All clip the penalty marker there on the second corner. I don't know if he's been yeah, calling he did, he got a warning. Track marker warning there appeared on the timing screen. Now managed with a good run to go third in the standing so far, but at the minute, Timmer's Yarnov is top of the table, but we have got five very quick drivers still to come. Right, on board with Liam at the start. Watch to the outside, so he knows he's got a good start. You can hear the wheels been backed out to uh, keep his teammates safe, which is the right thing to do. Goes wide, goes joker, doesn't know at this point what's happened behind him. No, but uh, choosing to split the strategy is Kevin Abring and Anton Marklin there getting hooked up. I'm sure Abring wouldn't have been turning left, he would have been turning right, but with Marklin leaning on his back wheels, you ah, can see there. contact between Gronholm and Marklin as well on the way into the first corner. So. 
It was all, I wonder if Granholm tagged Mark and then Mark and tagged Kevin. I mean, look, they all got away with it. And actually, uh, Markland's time of 3.04, well, it's not great. Him and, him and Doran are 12th and 13th, but it's not a disaster. You know, either of those guys can recover from there if Doran's car can be rebuilt. So we think he had a problem already here, don't we? Because he just suddenly dropped. When, when Granholm got past him, for me, he went backwards too quickly for Liam. Yeah, so we might here be able is. to see something here. There's, there's contact between them, but I'm not sure if that was what caused the damage. But, um, we can see the car is crabbing all over. This is the move. Look, watch on the inside here. Is he... No, it's all right. It's, it was... And but they... at this point, the car still quick, but it was the way that Gronham went away from him that it made me think something... Unless they broke something in the drive with the contact, and rather than a tyre, maybe transmission in, in that contact at the merge. But Bakra takes it, weight in the background. Mark uh, overcomes Gronham, sorry, and here comes Liam uh, Markland. We've no idea if they're going to be able to get that car fixed. Look at this. Boom. This was the start. It looked like Gronholm didn't get a particularly good one, but then away from the line, he, he got a nice grip. Yeah. That grip was, was in the clear, wasn't it? Yeah, Gronholm feathering the clutch off the line, getting the grip, but maybe not getting the initial point quite enough where Andres is able to, to shoot off and then get the grip after he'd already gained his advantage. I'm keen to see where Balmanis lost the place to Timmer's yard. I have to say we missed that. So this was Balmanis ahead of Timmer. I wonder if we'll see uh, anywhere where he loses out. We're focused on uh, Nick Lass and whether or not he can catch up. Backer has done well here, hasn't he? And, and let you know, the other thing is Backer has beaten the guys who he beat in Q1. So this is a good performance for Andreas. The problem for him is that the track is getting dry up. So it's gonna, this is gonna, the standings at the end of this one are gonna be really interesting. But Andreas Backward has won the first race of Q2. So Baczewski got left on the line. Sabo with a very nice start. Dick Kalianowski just gets through. Kevin Erickson, though, tactically bang on here. Yeah, that's right. lots of people having to kick the clutch off the line there, but uh, Kevin Erickson, he knew early on he was... Kalikowski was a little bit forceful there, wasn't he? Didn't give Zaba very much room. Zaba almost in the in the uh, the fence on the inside there. But uh, yeah, Kevin, he knew straight away he was going for the Joker, and he was big commitment into it. That was Zabo. Look, sorry, he got Kalikowski on the exit. Kevin Kalikowski, in fact, lost out to Ericsson as well. So he got to be on that line, damn it. It's even more crucial now, isn't it, that we've got a, a drying track. You don't run off the line. No, I think. Uh, I'd imagine that Kalikowski would have just been that slight bit too eager on the throttle and that would have been why he ran wide and the other two guys could get through. So Cyril and Mark's gamble of Slick paid off because he took P2 in this one. Gambling time is pretty much over. Kevin Erickson has taken that one and is faster so far, but the track is drying rapidly. Got a decent enough start. Yeah, so uh, dropping back a bit maybe off the line, but uh, following Sebastian into the Joker. I want to see what happens to Sebastian. He couldn't quite get the uh, transition here. He's got the first corner nailed, but uh, we ride him over Liam, and yeah, Sebastian just... The car just carried on going to the left, and he couldn't get it to switch to the right. Horrible, so. isn't it, when you're waiting for a weight transfer and it won't come, because you reach a point when you know it's gone, don't you? When it's gone, you just have to sit and, and wait till it stops. Yeah, you can hit... There's Liam uh, dropping it down the hill. Uh, not too sure if there was something wrong with the car, maybe, or just too fast, but... So watch for Markland here. Look at the second apex. There's the first one, here's the second one. Bang. So he could get a five-second penalty for that, but if he if he hasn't had a warning, Dan, he probably won't. Yeah, yeah. probably won't. So we'll see. Either way, Markland's taken it. He smashed it. 3 0 8.5. So on board with Timmy Hansen off the line. He will know by now, Dan, that it hasn't gone the way he wanted. What he did well here was move to the inside to cover it off, didn't he? But you said you felt he should potentially here have gone left with Kevin. It did actually work out OK. Yeah, I mean... Uh, he got lucky, though. Yeah, when I when I called that, I, uh, I didn't realise that uh, Larsen was, uh, was there blocking him out. But then Larsen, of course, followed him to the Joker. So um, that the, worked out for him. This was where Timmy got lucky. Linneman, you knew, was never going to make the breaking point here. That was the first thing which, which got him out of the way. And then for them, Paye then went Joker. So, you know, this was Abring. Now, Abring said he was too defensive in Norway. I would argue that he was too aggressive here because he lost time to, Kev, uh, to Timmy. But that's Timmy. Look at Timmy. <laughs> that was the, uh, the moment I spotted out the uh, commentary position, which was then 
what well, allowed the gap uh, to be big enough for Kevin to go in the Joker and out in front again. So Kevin, I know, will look at the data because he's that kind of driver. Fantastic car control, and I love the fact he's managed to take uh, a heat race win against a quality driver like Timmy Hansen. So well done, Kevin Abring and Timmy Hansen, both on a massive recovery drive. So take a look at the start, and Ollie Bennett there uh, just missing the start, but the fight was between uh, the man on pole and the man on fifth, and uh, it was the man on fifth that uh, came out on top for uh, this one. And uh, he, that was where he stayed as well through the race. But uh, German off German with the joke off. Yeah, we had. I mean, we had two, three, two. Yeah, three retirements. German went out. Bennett to really never made it off the grid. Poor gear. I mean, you got to feel sorry for him. But Shishir, it brilliant lap times. And and Toppy Hakenham, of course, himself a winner of World Rally Cross Championship rounds, doing a great job spotting here with GRX. Sent Nitish at just the right time. Because look at this, Danny's only just able to close the door. In fact, the gap there was okay, but Shishir got right back up to him. Yeah, the gap was big, but uh, Shishra there from then on was pulling in the lap times and he was faster than Rainis on each lap all the way up to the flag. Brilliant job, Rainis Nitsch, he wins Q2. Here are the standings then after Q2 and Andreas Backrud is still the overnight TQ despite the fact he went out in that wet race at the start of the session. Mark look, is up there P2, Abring is up to P3. Kevin Eriksson P4, Rainis Nittich, look at that score in Q1, 18, he binned it. Q2, he winned it. So he's right, it was podium or nodium, at the minute he's gone podium. Shishrit was sixth, look. Sebastian Eriksson is up to seventh, so both the OMC cars are top eight. Scheider is in eighth place. Kevin Hansen is in ninth. Niklas Gronholm is in tenth. Timazianov, 11th. Fabian Paye, 12th. Timmy Hansen is still in 16th place. So, Bachuska, 13th. Raymond, 14th. Sabo, 15th. All to play for tomorrow. Look at that. Liam and Kaliakoski. Oh, Baumannisuk down in 19th. Liam Doran is in 22nd. So, whoa, what a day at Hollius.